Hi you guys. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. This little box has been in my stash since last summer and today is the day that it's going to be made over. I have some of these um, pieces of ephemera and this is made out of um, these molds and it's made out of Stamparia. Um, it's kind of like a putty and I'll find out what it is and link it below. It's um, something I don't have anymore and I knew when I bought it it was really quite hard to get. But I'll try and find it for you and link it below. But the box I got at a rummage sale, of course. I think it was maybe 50 cents. And it is cute how it is, but I wanted to make it a little more um, masculine and I wanted to use, of course, some mixed media techniques. So I grabbed out my black gesso and my really cool um, hot glue gun that I have been using. I love it. It's a cordless one and it charges with your uh, computer. So that's really cool. It's got a USB port. I really like it so far and this is the second time I've been using it for a project. So I'm going to go all over the box with my black gesso. Here it is dry. I was thinking about leaving it just the front and back but then the inside is just a little too um, dainty for how the piece turned out. So um, we'll work on that in a little bit. Again, I'm using my new cordless hot glue gun. It is a dream. And I'm putting hot glue all over the back of this um, piece that I've already created. And I'm just giving it a nice press down, being careful not to get any hot glue on my hands and I did leave the edges a little bit uh, rough. Um, reason I did that is because I kind of liked how it gave it another um, bit of texture and dimension to the piece. So I'm going to put another uh, piece of this ephemera on the side and the back portion and again I'm using my hot glue gun. I had to put in another glue stick and I'm going to town on here. And this hot glue gun gets very hot, so you have to be very, very careful with it. Even my husband was watching me use it, and he thought, oh, that's pretty slick. I really like that. So, yeah, even the guys like your uh, craft items and craft tools, don't they? So, not worried that these two pieces of this um, molded paper is different. In color because I'm going to go over the whole thing with my black gesso again. So here's I'm showing you the edges are kind of turned up on the side and that's fine with me. Um, it looks really good in the end. Just adhering the back cover and um, I really like um, how this all came together. I wasn't sure at all what I was going to go for, but I knew I had these pieces in my stash and I wanted to use them. And I also had a whole bunch of uh, chipboard pieces that I wanted to go ahead and use up. I've been putting them from one pile to the other and finally I just said, you know what, I'm going to do something with these today. Do you ever do that? You put things from one spot to another spot to another spot and it's like, just use it, right? So I'm turning off my hot glue gun there because it just takes uh, three to five minutes to uh, heat up so it's nice to have it um, cool on your desk so if you knock it over you won't burn yourself. I'm opening my black gesso again. This was really really um, tight so I needed to clean this black gesso. Here I'm using my soft brush and I'm going all over the front, the side, and the back of this. I'll do it off camera but I'm just getting in all of those grooves and um, using the brush to do that. I 
okay here's all of these chipboard pieces that I have and there are some that are a little more vintage and you can see here I did pull off some of that ephemera from the front cover because I needed a space that was a little more flat and now I'm going to go ahead and work with all of these pieces of chipboard and I'm going to cover all of the pieces with my black gesso and um, what I'm pulling out here is my um, craft knife and I'm just carefully poking out the Roman numerals from this clock face and I thought that would be neat and I've got some clock hands and I'm going to cover those and I also have some gears to the side there and you also need to cover just some scrap pieces so that we can um, make all of these items dimensional. Now I am pulling out some more clock hands because I didn't think that those were big enough and you can see throughout the process I do have a bit of a problem with my clock hands but in the final pictures you will see that it did work out just perfect in the end. So I'm just kind of laying my things on, getting a feel for what I need and um, going ahead and covering everything with my black gesso. You only need to do the one side that you're going to see, but I did do around the edges also. So I'll finish all of this off camera to save some time. All right, I'm back and now I'm just kind of um, putting the pieces down using my hot glue gun again and you can see that they have all been covered with black gesso. The glue gun has a real nice um, stand that uh, makes it sit real sturdy on your desk so that's really nice too. Here I'm using some of those vintage pieces and creating a bunch of depth and I know that it's hard to see right now because we've got a lot of black on black going on. But you will see um, as I keep uh, creating here, it'll get a little uh, clearer for you. I'm going to add a lot of paint to the background and that's going to bring out all of that definition to the piece. So just going ahead and putting all of that down and I will show you here how I prop up the clock face carefully and I'm using those little pieces of scrap and giving it some dimension so it sits a little higher than the box top and I'm making sure that my Roman numerals are going correctly here I scratched the box a little bit with my fingernail so I just gave it a quick cover up with some more of that black gesso. I'm just trying to decide how things go together here so that it would have the most amount of texture. Using those scraps from the Roman numerals that I punched out because they're skinny enough and I'm going ahead and placing it in three areas behind that um, clock center and actually I'm going to give that two levels of dimension so that it stands up nice and tall through that clock base and it's just easy you're just layering it with your hot glue and adding the chipboard so that it's um, nice and sturdy it takes a little bit of doing, but it's a real fun project. It's kind of like a puzzle. You're putting a big puzzle together. And then once you get to put the paint on, it's very, very rewarding. I'm going to speed this up for you so you don't have to watch me do this uh, piece by piece. So we're going to go a little bit faster here for you. Wouldn't it be fun if you could craft this fast?
Okay, I'm back and now we're going to start adding the layers of paint. So my thought was that the box had that print on the inside that was green. I was going to go for some green shades and I picked out three different colors of green and I'm starting with the darkest green right now. And that green is by Deco Art and it's called Hosier Dark Green. And after that color, we are going to go to my Deco Art Light Avocado. And I abs absolutely adore that color. And then I believe I went to kind of a vanilla cream color. So it's a little hard to see yet, but when I do add the next color, it will come to life. So here's where I'm deciding that that inside and the sides there was just too feminine for this piece. So I will be adding um, my black gesso to the inside and the sides. And it does pull the whole piece together. So I really like how that turned out. So going ahead and putting down that light avocado by Deco Art, going over the whole entire piece here. And you can see I'm just using a dry brush and I'm dabbing the paint off on another piece of paper there over to the right so that I don't have too much on it. You don't want to add a lot of pressure. You want to go over the um, tops of the ephemera pieces and just getting those like highlighted so that you do have that black underneath. That's what's going to give all the dimension to this piece and um, it really really turns out great. It's a fun thing to do and I've seen uh, lots of other people make these types of boxes and I thought this would be uh, quite interesting to maybe give as a birthday present or um, something of that, that nature, you know, just kind of a stash box maybe for a guy or something. Um, I'm sure that it will end up sitting on my pile for a while until I find just the right person to give it to. But that's all right. It won't take up much space. And um, I did make some space by using those chipboard pieces. And you can see here I'm having a little bit of problem with my clock hand already and I'm, I'm trying not to add too much pressure to those because they're very, very delicate. I'll go all over the front and the sides of the box here. Here I did put one coat of the black inside and on the edges of the piece. And here I'm adding that um, vanilla color and it is by Folk Art and it is called Summer Porch and that really gave the box the finishing dimension that it needed and like i said i'm not pushing way too hard i'm just kind of going over the top and if you get some uh, too much where you don't want it just quickly use your damp towel and wipe it off because it won't be dry instantly there's a little uh, dry time there for you so there is a way in case you get a little too much that you can wipe it off. You can see I wasn't happy with that piece there. So I just went ahead and wiped it off with my damp cloth. And then um, you can go back over it with the darker color if you would like. But now you can see the depth and dimension to the box. Uh, it went from very feminine um, to a very masculine piece in just a few moments, didn't it? Pretty neat, just a different technique and something, you know, you may have all different kinds of chipboard and things in your stash. I'm sure you do. And um, this is uh, quite fun to do. So again, I'm having problems with my clock hands and I think in just a short while you'll see that I actually pulled them right off and I got out more chipboard and I redid them because they were just too flimsy. 
Let me know what you think about this product project excuse me in the comments below i would love to have you subscribe to my channel and also if you're interested we have a great facebook group called everything paper and glue and it is growing day by day and i so appreciate the people that are commenting and having fun in that group um, I just added a gem, a large gem, that was sitting on my desk for quite some time. And another thing, it just fit perfectly in that gear. And I really liked the uh, bit of sparkle and bling that it brought to the piece. So I'm just going to add another coat of um, gesso to the inside and the edges of the box. I'm going to fix those clock hands because they're just not working. And um, you will see in the final pictures how it all turned out. So yep, I'm going to add another bit of gesso there. And here is something that I thought about. I have these um, waxes and they're by Finnebar Art Alchi Al 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 Alchemy, Alchemy, Art Alchemy and they're metallic waxes. Now I have the green, I have the silver, and then I have this aged brass. And the aged brass is exactly what this piece needed. It gave it a real, real um, warmth and another layer of depth and dimension. And there's that broken clock hand again. And all you do is just go ahead and um, put it on with your finger and to all the places that you would like it. Here's where I'm going to pull that those clock hands off and fix them. Um, I did the um, wax to the front, the side, and the back, and it turned out just great. You'll see in the pictures at the end. So back to the piece, um, just finishing up these details. And again, I'm going to fix those clock hands. And I hope you enjoyed the project. I hope that you will stay tuned and see what we have going on on Saturday. I'm really itching to do an art journal page. So that is going to be what I'm looking forward to doing next. And Saturdays usually is an art journal page. Um, I'm also going to include a little crafting tip. Some people were wanting to um, hear how I go ahead and clean my um, ink spray nozzles. Sometimes those get clogged and I'm going to show you how to do that on Saturday on my channel. Have a great rest of the week and we'll see you on Saturday. Thanks for watching.